everyone, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I'd love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. We are streaming live. Today is Monday. It is January 16th. The year is 2023. Boy, do I have a fun fold for you tonight. It's a double door pop-up card. Now I'm gonna demonstrate it in a birthday theme, but I have several other cards to share with you tonight, including a bonus project. Now I've also created a template for you for the hinges of this card. That's gonna be available for you in the free project sheet. Now, if you're wondering what that is, when tonight's live stream is over, you'll be able to find a link for the cutting dimensions and supplies, which I call a project sheet, down in the video description below. That'll be there for you so that you can print out the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and that template so you can recreate this card with me from home. Whether you are watching my channel on a replay or you are here on the live stream, I am thrilled that you're here to join me. Thank you for your time. Please do me a favor and log into your YouTube account, which uses a Gmail address so that you can comment or you can chat during the live stream. I also want to make sure that you know all about Gina Curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name in blue off to the side. You may recognize that, that surname. Gina is my daughter. She's the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio, but an avid stamper. And she's here to help moderate during the live stream to give you links and answer questions because there's no way that I can keep up. But please know I come back and I read every single comment that you provide. Now, one thing I wanna chat with you tonight about before we get started is this, your response to Stamp Studio memberships has been overwhelming. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Now, if you don't know anything about it, let me tell you, for $5 a month, I will email you every Monday morning a new project tutorial, not shared anywhere else. They're made exclusively for this membership. There's cards that you can duplicate very quickly and cards that have all kinds of die cuts and fun layers. But the best part is that you don't have to be a customer or you don't even have to worry about whether you're a demonstrator or not. Anyone, regardless of country, is eligible to join the membership. Now you can find all the information over on my website and the red menu bar, click membership. We would love to have you join us. All right, let's get started on tonight's project. Going to move those buttons out of the way and we are going to start by doing some scoring. Now I'm going to start off by telling you that this card has multiple pieces. Don't fret, it's not hard. I've made it really easy for you. The very first thing you're going to need is a piece of cardstock. Now this is measuring five and a half by five and three quarters. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you're alive and you're in front of a few hundred people and they're all watching you and your dimensions are only a quarter inch difference, you can easily make a mistake. So I made some marks here. I am going to turn this and I'm just going to show you. This is the five and a half inch mark here at the top. Okay. We are going to score this. Sorry, I'm turning it the wrong way. This is the five and three quarters. See, I told you, <laughs> you gotta make sure when you're going with these dimensions that are very, very close in your cardstock, you're going the right way. So this is five and three quarters inch across the top. We want to score at one and one half inch. And that one and one half inch number is gonna be prevalent tonight in several cases. So just keep that in mind. So here we are at one and one half inch going to use the scoring blade here on my trimmer. Now I love this because this trimmer also includes a cutting blade. See it at the bottom of your screen? They stay on that clear track and wait till you see the champ of that clear track tonight. So at one and a half inches, we are going to score. All right, so I'm going to set this off to the side. I did make one that was a little prettier before you joined me without the writing off of it. And here it is. So it's identical. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to push that trimmer off to the side and we're gonna crease down on that score line. So I'm gonna come across it with my bone folder so I have a nice crisp crease. These edges should be aligned. That's very, very important. Now here at the tippy top, we're gonna to add some designer series paper because then we're gonna start building upon this. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of this beautiful paper. Isn't this fantastic? I have fallen in love with the flowers and more designer series papers. One side definitely has your flowers and some patterns, but there's a lot of geometrics and pattern paper that doesn't have a theme to it. Just like all the Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers, they are double-sided, giving you lots of options. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some adhesive to the back side of this. And my Stampin' Seal Plus is very, very strong. 
I don't know about you, but I get really excited with my adhesive sometimes and it falls on my work surface and I fight that sticky spot. So I love that silicone craft sheet to make my life a lot easier. I'm going to turn this because I find it's a lot easier for me because this is where the crease is to put my paper on. Now I'm just going to be cognizant of the direction. You'll want to do that too at home if yours does have one because obviously this is going to be the front bottom of the card. So there we go. We're going to attach that here. All right. So far so good. The next step is going to include hinges. So I'm going to set this off to the side and I'm going to bring in two pieces of designer series paper. I know there's going to be a lot of cutting and scoring dimensions for you. Those are all covered in that project sheet. So please keep that in mind. You don't have to worry about writing them all down. I've got it all nice and easy for you. This is one and a half by five, just if you're following along. I'm going to start with one of them. We're going to come back here using that scoring blade. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to score this in half. So this is one and a half inches. So three quarters of an inch is half. So I'm going to come down here. Oh, I'd rather just line it up and close the door. That's easier for me. And I'll just close it like that. So we're going to do that to both of these because this is going to fold. So three quarters of an inch here. And then we're going to score. All right. Now we've got to make some marks. Now I love this pencil. It's my very favorite craft pencil. I have it linked for you on my website. I get so many emails about this. You're going to go over to my website and you're going to click on shop and then scroll down to craft room favorites. I got a bunch of stuff linked for you there that I use here in the studio with my Stampin' Up! products that aid me in my crafting and you're going to love them as well. Remember I told you one and a half inches? We're going to turn this. So I'm going to line up this left end at one and a half inches and what I'm going to do with that pencil is I'm going to make some marks. Love that the mechanical pencil fits right inside that trimmer. So we've got that here and here. I'm going to do the exact same thing now on this one, one and a half inches. This trimmer has a ledge at the very top. Do you see it here? I can't live without that because I can't do anything straight. So that helps me to make sure that my paper is nice and straight against that ledge. Now I was concerned that you couldn't see those pencil marks too good. And you guys love my silver pencil. So we're going to mark this one up so that you can kind of see it. Okay. So I'm going to do those marks there and those marks to there. Obviously, when you're at home, a pencil is sufficient. Now, here's where that clear cutting guide comes in like a champ. I am going to line up one of the corners and I want it to fall here on that pencil mark. So we're going to score on the diagonal. So I'm going to go ahead and close that door. And because it's clear, I can manipulate this paper the very best I can to try to get it in that track. And it's going to travel down that little thin gray strip here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it and I am going to score. Now we're going to turn it and do the exact same thing this way from this corner to the score line. So in essence, we are making an X in a little tiny area. So I'm just going to line that up and do that here. Now we need to do it one more time on this other hinge because we have to have one on each side of this pop-up card. And again, I'm doing my best to keep your head, my head on your camera view. It's always the hardest part about a live stream when you get to be my age. You need to be close. <laughs> All right, there's your tip here. And looking to get that pencil mark there as close as I can. And then we'll score. Okay, we're done with this for right now. We will come back to it. Now I am going to trace one of these so that you can see. So we've got a line here and we've got an X here. You guys with me so far? Okay, this is where we're going to do a little bit of cutting. I'm just actually going to do it and I'll show you. We're going to cut on the angle to the center line like this. I'm going to turn it to make it easy for my hand and I'm going to come from the top center down to where I just cut and that's going to leave us this. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on this one. Now the great thing about this is this project is symmetrical so we can turn one to go on each side. So don't worry about having to do it upside down if you're cutting them at the same time. Just cut them both the same. All right, I'm going to go ahead and toss those pieces of paper away. And now I'm going to actually erase some of these marks because I think they may be a little bit confusing as we go forward. So I just wanted to make sure that you could follow me from home. You've got the privilege of a replay button and then pause, which means when you make this at home, it's going to be really easy for you to follow along with me. All right, so we've got our hinges here. Do you remember the actual card base? Well, this is where the hinges are going to go. I'm going to open this up flat to make it easier for you to see me. I am going to bring in my silicone craft sheet. This angled edge needs to be on the outside of the card base. Okay, so this one is going to go this way. And this one is going to go this way. So we've got angle here and angle here. Okay, you're going to want to fold this in half. 
and then make sure those edges are aligned and go over that with your bone folder. So that's one. Now this one obviously is going to go this way and we're going to go over it with the bone folder. Now you're going to notice that there's a couple other score lines here. Angle, angle, because remember we cut those. So when this gets anchored here, this flap is going to come down. Got to use that bone folder with a fun fold. And this other one is going to come here. It's going to be the little spring hinge for that corner. Now it may look confusing and you may not think that's going to work, but it will. So we're going to do the same thing here. This one is going to come down and here's that little spring hinge here that comes up. So let me just show you closely. So it's in half, this comes down and this comes over. So it kind of makes like a little point at the top, doesn't it? All right. Now that we've got our creases in place, what we're going to do next is we are going to adhere these. So this is where my silicone craft sheet comes into play. I have tried adhesive. It was a disaster. I am not a huge glue girl. I use way too much, but I will tell you that it's the best thing for this project. And I'm going to give you some glue tips because if you're like me and you're heavy handed, this is going to make your life easy. Number one, get your glue started so you know it's flowing nicely. You don't need a big clump and have a mess. The adhesive is going to go here on that angled portion. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to turn it upside down. I am dragging the tip of the glue on the cardstock because that helps me to spread it so I don't put it on too heavy. We want it near the edges, but we don't want it overflowing. I'm going to lay this on top of here so you've got a contrasting background. And I am looking to align the bottom and the outside edge the very best that I can. Okay, and then we're going to push that down in place. Now that's going to take under a minute to dry, but we'll do the other side while we're waiting. So remember, the outside edge is going to go here. So we're going to flip this upside down and we're going to add some glue. And I'm working in thin amount because I want to make sure it doesn't ooze out where I don't need it. Okay, I'm going to stick that back inside of there. That little stand, by the way, is in my um, craft room favorites for you. Love that because it keeps the glue primarily at the top. Outside angled edge here, lining it up to the bottom. And this is now my left side. And I'm going to press that in place. Okay, here at the top is where we're going to do some gluing. Now it's super easy. So all you're going to do is you're going to fold this down and fold this down. The glue is only going to go on this little tiny triangle right here. So you don't want to use too much. Boy, have I learned that lesson. All right, so once again, I'm going to drag my tip here, wanting to make sure that it's nice and thin, but I've got coverage. And the same thing here. Doing the same thing. Okay, I'm going to cap that because I don't need it. And in essence, all you are going to do now, because you've creased it, is close the top flap and then just press. Because of the score lines, you know everything has already been conditioned for the way it's going to go. And I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. What's going to happen is it's going to create an opening that's going to hinge. Now we've got to work on the doors for the pop-up feature. That part's easy. So here I've got some designer, I'm sorry, cardstock. This is Starry Sky, by the way. Isn't this a beautiful blue? Absolutely love it. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach these doors, but they need to be attached when this is open. Now, if you have done this correctly, you should be able to open this flat, which means there's no buckling here. That's going to help it get in and out of the envelope very, very easily. And it's going to allow you to attach those doors. So one of them is going to have to go here because remember the door is going to go here. I know you're already thinking that's going to look ugly. Well, we're going to fix all that. One thing I want to point out too is that you want this at the very bottom, but you don't want it to overlap the crease of this hinge. Otherwise, it's going to kind of click when you close it. You don't want to attach it above that angled score line. So this one I'm going to mark up so you can see it. So this should fall below this area. Same here. So there's that angled score line. It's going to fall below that area. Now for this, you can use liquid glue once again, and I will tell you, I did find that the best for the doors because it allows me a little shimmy room, right? So I'm going to add a thin layer, dragging my tip once again, and I'm going to take my door and it's going to go to the outside so that when I close it, it's going to go in. So I'm looking here at the bottom, making sure I'm near the edge, but not overlapping it. I didn't extend past that crease line and we're going to press that in place. So that's going to go inside. You didn't, I didn't let that dry, did I? <laughs> All right, that's the beauty of a live. You've got to work quickly. All right, now we're going to do this side. So let me go ahead and add some liquid glue. Again, dragging that tip. I got a heavy hand with glue. I'm going to cap that up. 
and then this again will go to the outside. I am looking at the very bottom of this piece here for the door, making sure I'm not overlapping too much of the crease. I'm below that line. None of us cuts and scores absolutely perfectly. It's impossible. I mean, we try. None of us are perfect. All right, I'm just making sure my glue is getting dry there. So now what's going to happen, do you see how this creates a crease here for those hinges? And then this is going to come down. Believe it or not, this has one more piece to the pop-up. And we'll get to that in a minute. Right now, we want to pretty this up a little bit because I think that's really important before we go too far. So what I did is I cut some strips of designer series paper that I'm going to put here along the side. That's going to help kind of hide where that little area here of the angle is. I like using all the same color for the base because if you're off by a little smidgen, it's not really going to show. It's really unnoticeable. Now to speed things up, I'm going to use a little adhesive here. And I'm going to tell you right now that liquid glue is probably the better option because you'll have wiggle room. Now, unlike this that we can open flat, we cannot do that here. So I recommend that you work from the bottom up because always better that it looks pretty when you can first see it than not pretty at the top where you're not going to notice it. So I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera view. Bear with me. And I'm going to go this way. Okay. Now we're going to do one more on the other side. And I'm going to run little tabs of adhesive. Now the Stampin' Seal Plus, like I said, super strong and it comes out in small tabs, which makes it really easy for me to put it in small areas. Again, starting at the bottom, because I want to make sure that looks the prettiest, and then coming up here towards the top. And I'll crease that down inside of here. All right, so now those little areas are decorated. It's kind of looking like a door, isn't it? All right, now let's talk about these because obviously you can see this here and that's really pretty obtrusive. You can choose any designer series paper that you'd like. And this is the best part about Stampin' Up! Papers is the color coordination. Isn't that fun? Here's that flower pattern we talked about, but here is the very generic pattern. Now I decided to put these on the front of my doors. And again, I'm speeding things up with a little adhesive here. And I am going to turn this and I want this to rest within the area of the door. It is narrow and it's that way on purpose so that we can cover the creases. So I'm looking to align it the best I can and we're gonna press that down. Now we're gonna do the other side. When you open this for the pop-up that's coming, you're gonna see the inside as well. So I kind of felt like it needed decorating, don't you? So we're gonna add just a couple more pieces there. And again, all the instructions are for you inside your project sheet same package of paper. It's going to be really, really fun. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip over. I'm not going to use the floral this time. We're going to add some here. And of course, this is a lot easier because it's flat. I'm looking to leave that margin all the way around. And then we'll do one more for the other side. I'm going to add some adhesive here. And that one is going to go on this side. Now, obviously, if you would prefer um, to emboss a layer and put it here, you can. Keep in mind, it'll be a little bit thicker. All right, now here comes the best part of all. Now I'm gonna push this off to the side because we need a mechanism on the top and a mechanism on the bottom. Easy peasy. The hard part, quote unquote, is finished. I'm grabbing a piece of basic white cardstock and you will find the cutting dimensions for this in the project sheet. I'm gonna use my Memento black ink pad and I've pulled out this birthday cake. Now I'm gonna turn it face up when I ink it because that stamp is very large in comparison to my ink pad. And I wanna make sure that I absolutely don't miss a spot when I'm coloring it. So I wanna show you this stamp set. It's called Best Day. It's in the new mini catalog. And I fell in love with the whimsical images because I don't know about you, this can be used regardless of age or gender. So it immediately caught my attention and I love birthday sets because birthday cards are the ones that I make the most. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that face up and I'm gonna ink it this way. I like to give a little twist and a little tap to make sure I get all those little nooks and crannies. My arthritic hands need a little extra TLC. And then what I'm gonna do, believe it or not, I'm turning this. I'm gonna make it easier for me, looking my best I can to keep it straight and we're gonna stamp and we're gonna push. If you have the Stamparatus stamp positioning tool and you're gonna make a lot of these cards, break it out and use it. So there we go, we've got our image. Now, while we have the black memento ink out, I'm gonna go ahead and just push that aside because I think I'm gonna move on maybe. Well, you know what? I think I'm just gonna stall. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just give you a couple tips about this. I've already got it colored. We're not gonna do that while we're together. But I wanna give you a couple tips about coloring. 
I love alcohol-based markers. I get a ton of questions about them. There's only two things about this image that I want to chat you through. You can see I didn't make this very straight. That's what happens when I try to avoid the camera. I am going to use the matching alcohol blends to the Starry Sky cardstock here. Okay, that's the beauty is the color coordination. There is a light and a dark shade. One of your very frequently asked questions is, how do you highlight the tiny spots? So I'm going to give you a super easy answer. I use the chisel tip, which is the thin end of your marker. And I did these randomly. So I just kind of went in. Remember, alcohol is going to spread. So you're not going to color this in like you would a regular marker because what's going to happen is it's going to do a little bit of expanding as the evaporation of that alcohol starts to process, right? You're going to give that a few seconds for it to evaporate. And once it has, you're going to use that dark marker. And you, know, you can't really blend this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, you take that dab, that dark one, and you make a dab in one of those corners. There is absolutely no reason to bring those two colors together. Now, I think this is going to be virtually impossible to see on camera, but in your project sheet where there's color photos, you'll be able to appreciate that. So that's just a tip for you to get a little bit of depth without any effort. Now, the next thing I get questions about is how can I do subtle shading? And that's a great question. So once again, we've got crumb cake, light and dark. So we're going to use the light one first. So I'm going to come over here to that chisel tip and I'm just going to color in this little platter. I'm going to pretend kind of like it's a little modern wood platter. I'm just going to let that process as well. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my gray granite light Stampin' Blends. I'm going to come up right underneath here and go right around this, okay? The great thing about alcohol-based markers is you do not have to be a pro. You can build on top of them and the lines virtually disappear. So they're so much easier to use than dye-based markers. Now for the dark, let me show you what I did on this one. I used the chisel tip because I thought it was easier and I literally went underneath the cake and just highlighted the bottom of it by just tracing the scallops with that tip. What's going to happen is as this lightens and begins to process, it's going to create a little bit of a shadow there. And when it's all finished and you've colored it in, it's going to look like this. Now this is going to need a couple layers because we're going to need to weigh down that top flap. So let's go ahead and let's flip this over and let's add some of our adhesive here to the back side. I'm doing this very quickly. You're going to notice I'm using the starry sky next. I decided to change up the pattern of the colors because typically you want the base color on the bottom. And I thought, you know what, that's too predictable and it blended too much. So I'm using Tahitian Tide, which is one of the colors in the designer paper that I used here just to separate this and give this a real focal point. All right. Here comes where this is going to go. This is going to get centered here and then we're going to work on the pop-up insert. I'm going to flip this upside down and I am grabbing my full size dimensionals and you're going to need three of them. So I've got those here and you're going to do one, two and three. Make sure it's well balanced. Very important for mailing. I'm going to use that paper piercing tool attachment on the back of my take your pick tool. I can't live without this thing. And then this now is going to get centered between here and here visually. And this is going to be the flap that keeps those double doors closed. Okay, let's tack that down. Now let's work on this. Super simple. You're going to need a piece of basic white cardstock. You're going to score this in half. Let me get my trimmer back out. Just so that you are aware, this is called the inside card on your project sheet. It's three and three quarters by eight. And we're going to score it in half, which is four inches. So there we go. Nice and simple. Now for this one, I decided, wow, I want to make this cute, but I don't want to overpower or take over or take away from the front of my card. Now there's two ways you can fold this fun fold, and I am going to show you both of them. So the first thing is we want to make a really kind of cute background here. So let's do this. Let's put some grid paper underneath us to protect our work surface. I'm not going to go through the whole entire thing with you while we're live. I'm very cognizant and precious of your time, but I'm going to walk you through it. This is all the same stamp set. This says wishing you all the happiness. So I'm going to stamp that smack dab right here in the middle. Okay. I am going to open this up. Look at it. 
That's lovely. Another card from my mom. I always say if it's not perfect, I send it to my mom because she loves everything I do. Mothers love the accidents, don't they? Okay, and then this is going to go here inside the center. And I'm taking that off camera and cleaning it. Same stamp set. Look at those. Isn't that cute? I thought they looked like little sparklers, which for me would be great for a 4th of July card, as well as an Independence Day in another country for my Canadians. And how about Happy New Year? So it definitely can be used. Now the Memento Black Ink Pad needs to dry. I got a little zealous, but I want to show you one other thing. I am going to open up the Tahitian Tide Ink Pad. Look at those little party squiggles. Are these not adorable? All right, so I'm going to ink this up and I'm going to stamp. And I am turning the paper not turning my hand. That is the best tip I can give you as a stamper. All the times we want to do this, we want to do that contortionist stamping thing, which is never favorable. You don't get a good image. This now is Parakeet Party. This is that exact same stamp set, same colors from the designer series paper. So I just kind of cheated. I'm cleaning that stamp right off camera when you're not watching. It's just above your camera view. And then Starry Sky, we're bringing all that cohesive color palette together. And then I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna kind of fill in just a little bit. Isn't this fun? And yeah, I love this palette because it can be used for anyone, guy or girl. Now I am not going to finish the inside, but I'm gonna show you what I did to it ahead of time because we've already covered this. I used the Stampin' Blends markers in those same three color ink pads. Again, color coordination, Fantastic. So we've got that here. This now is going to be the portion of the pop-up that goes on the inside. And again, this has two ways to fold and I'm going to show you both. We are going to flip this over. Your alcohol blends are going to bleed through your cardstock. So please keep that in mind when you're adding it as a, a portion to your card. You wouldn't want this to be visible, obviously. So I'm going to add some adhesive. Whoop, I didn't hold it right. The one thing about this adhesive that's very, very strong is you don't want to push too hard. The cartridge doesn't require a lot of pushing, which is one reason why I love it with my arthritic hands, because I don't have to squeeze and push to get it out. Fold at the top. This, like I said, should be able to open flat. This is going to get centered here, and then I'm going to push. Now, the way the card was originally designed that I'd seen many, many places where the double doors come in, and the flap comes down and then it pops and then you've got the pop-up. But then I thought, oh my gosh, I've got another idea. What about this? What about if we open it, we pull these in, we put this down. You've got a double background here that's super fun to use. You could even put designer series paper here. And not only that, it automatically will pop up and then it then reveals the inside of your card. So you can go this way or you can close it and put the card insert like this. Now wait until you see these other cards. I'm gonna push that one off to the side. That's the one I demonstrated. This is inside your project sheet. This is gonna make your life so easy to do the hinges, okay? This next one uses another brand new stamp set called Taco Fiesta. I love it. It's adorable. Congratulations, Erica Serwin. You did a fantastic job on this. She designed it and I made this card. So I took that pinata, I add a little bit of linen thread to make it look like it's hanging. Spectacolo, I love that. And then that beautiful dandy design designer paper, which by the way, is absolutely free during the sale. So this is from now until the end of February. There are items in here that you can choose for free at a $50 level. And then there's two items in the back that you can choose at a $100 level. And that designer series paper is a huge pack and that's one of them. So again, I've just coordinated that paper. It pops up this way. Oh my gosh, it just gets better and better, doesn't it? Now look, this one opens this way. Holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Look at the shadow around that guacamole. Can you see it? I'm hoping the camera's gonna let it pick up. If not, it's gonna be in your pictures in your project sheet. You'll see how I use that light gray granite again to bring the appearance of the image forward. Again, this can close this way or it can close this way. Be cognizant of the placement of your image so that it doesn't show from the front. Okay, that's two. This next one, the stamp set is called At The Pond and this is a host exclusive stamp set. What that means is if you spend $150 in product before tax and shipping, you have the opportunity to choose products that are not available for sale. And this actually is one of them. 
So here's a little side note, a little Lisa disclaimer. I am scared to death of frogs, okay? And you would think that's crazy because I live in Florida. <laughs> but this frog I'm not afraid of because look at that adorable face. I love the set because you can color this in if you'd like. Look at the dragonfly. Or you can use the two steps that fills it. Isn't that brilliant? All right, so here's the card I made with that one. Look at, oh my goodness, is this not adorable? I used that second solid image from here to fill this card. I did not color anything by hand, including that dragonfly. This is the same pack of paper that I used on the card I demonstrated. And then this one can open like this. And then look at, you've got a friend in me with those flies. And then I'm here for you with a heart. But look at the colors, isn't this fun? Now, I did not design this one to be the double fold, but if I had, I could have scooted this over so that from the inside, you would have that other layer, okay? So this will give you another idea on how you can use the fun fold, but I got a bonus for you. These three are inside your project sheet. That's free for you, but I made one more to practice because, you know, it's one thing to make a card by yourself. It's another to try to articulate the directions, right? So I used Friendly Gnomes this afternoon when I made this card. Many of you have told me this is your favorite. It has coordinating dies that were carried over from the last mini catalog. So this is not a bundle. You'll have to buy them separately, but it's the Gnomes dies. So it cuts out your gnome images. But here is the card I made with this one. Oh my gosh, is this not adorable? I know I love them all and they can be used for anything. So again, this would open up, here comes your pop-up, and then I'd use the little mushroom there that I cut out. This is part of the dies, and then wishing you the most magical of birthdays. Now, this one, I didn't do this on purpose because I wanted to make sure that I was on the inside, but you could have let that mushroom hang over a little bit because you've got room here. Keep that in mind. So if this had hung over a little bit, you can actually have it showing from the front or the back. This is the Happy Forest Designer Series paper. So these are the cards. So we have here the bonus project and then the other two that are gonna be part of your project sheet. I cannot wait to hear which one is your favorite. Oh my gosh, this fun fold is amazing. Tip for you, take scrap cardstock and make a prototype so you have a template. Once you've got it, you've got it. The tip there is those angle sides when you attach the hinges go to the outside and you've got this. It's not difficult, I promise. Now there's a few things that I wanna to talk to you about before you guys go and I wanna give you the next date for the next live. I wanna chat with you about this. If you have a huge wish list, maybe you need to consider the custom starter kit. Oh, right now, there are three fabulous options with a reduced price for you to create a kit to include to get some freebies. Now, I will tell you, this does make you, and here comes my air quotes, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And a lot of people freak out when they hear that. But you know what? The vast majority of Stampin' Up! demonstrators are hobby paper crafters just like you, looking for a discount on their amazing Stampin' Up! supplies. I would love to add you to my stamping team. Now, you can read all about the starter kit special that's happening right now through the sale through the end of February and all the perks I provide my team over on my website under the tab join. Now, the next live is coming up. I will be back with you next Monday. That is January 23rd already. January is flying by. So mark your calendars that you'll be here with me. I would love to see you. I'm going to be using vellum. I'm going to be teaching you some amazing coloring techniques that are super simple that I don't think perhaps you've thought of. And I've got brand new samples for you as well. Now, before we go, I would love to do an open Q&A with you. So if you'd like to stay, type in the letter Q in a colon and your question, and I'll answer numerous of those here live. I can put your name and your question right here up on the screen. If you cannot stay, thanks for joining me, but do me a favor before you go. Hit that thumbs up button here on YouTube. It is a huge help for me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon and the word all, and you don't want to miss subscribing to my free weekly e-newsletter that has a tutorial not shared on any of my other platforms. And no, that tutorial is not in my membership program either. Head over to lisastampstudio.com, scroll all the way to the bottom where it says subscribe and sign up. It's free and it's no frills. We would absolutely love to include you. All right, I'm switching screens here and I'm gonna give you a couple seconds while I push all of this out of the way. 
and it's the informal part. So you're going to see my head for a minute while we get this going so I can get the computer mouse and then pull up your questions. All right, let me pull that off over here and let me get my keyboard going so that I can funnel through the questions that you have. All right, I am looking for questions. Now keep in mind there's a delay between when I see them and when you type. All right, Joanne has a question that I get asked all the time. Is there a correct, correct way to store the stamp and blends, horizontal or vertical? The answer is yes. Let me show you. They should be stored flat, horizontally. If you store them vertically, you are draining the barrel to one side, which can dry out the tips. Make sure when you cap them, the caps are tight. You'll see that there's little bumps on either side to help you pull them off. And you know what, while we're together, can I give you just a crazy tip? I think I've told you numerous times, I have basal joint arthritis. So this area, you see how swollen it gets? So pinching and pulling here is very difficult for me. So let me show you what I do. Um, I use the hand that feels strongest that day. So what I do is I put them between my middle and my index finger and I pull them off this way and cap them this way because this is too difficult for me. Now, I know that might seem kind of crazy, but it's just a little tip for you in case you have the same problem. Great question, Joanne. Thank you so much. All right, let me scroll for some other questions and ask those tonight. Um, Debbie has a question. What is the difference between embossing folders and 3D embossing folders? And does the 3D plate come with the embossing machine? Excellent question. I have a YouTube video here on my channel. All you have to type in is 3D embossing folders or the stamp and cut emboss machine and you'll get a great video that walks you through it. But to answer your question, yes. So let's do the down screen one more time. Let me move that. I have to grab a couple things because I didn't plan for this. Um, hold on. Uh, this is the specialty plate we're going to talk about. And I am looking, hold on, for a 3D plate. The 3D embossing folders are much thicker than a standard folder, number one. Now keep in mind that Stampin' Up! has designed all of their folders and dies to fit into any die cutting machine. I never go out on a limb and say, oh, it's great to use an XYZ machine because I don't have it. So I don't like to put myself out there unless one of you tells me I've tried it in XYZ machine and it works great. So please keep that in mind. This is going to be used in the stamp and cut and emboss machine, but the easiest way to get the best impression is with plate number four, which is the specialty plate. So basically what this is going to do is take the place of the clear cutting mat. So your cardstock goes inside on your platform, run it through, and you're going to get the most beautiful embossed image. Now you're wondering, if you don't have the stamp and cut and emboss machine, will this work in it? We are told yes, because the basic platforms of the machine are the same regardless of manufacturer. But do me a favor, I would absolutely love it that if you have a machine that's not the stamp and cut and emboss machine, send me an email, contact me through my website and say, hey, I tried the 3D embossing folders with XYZ machine and I had this experience. Your feedback helps me to demonstrate for you so that I can answer questions like this. I only have the stamp and cut and emboss machine, but I do know that they are made to work in all the machines they are compatible. Excellent question. All right, we'll do a couple more. Uh, <laughs> Kel has a question. How do you find time to create all these cards? Kel, first and foremost, I love to stamp more than anything else. So for a lot of people, this is a hobby. It, and that's exactly how this hobby started for me. I love to be creative. I always have my entire life since I've been a kid. So when I first learned to stamp, I was really bad at it. But just like anything else, if you're gardening or photography or knitting, you get better and better with experience. I make sure that I carve out time almost every single day to stamp. There's just one day a week I don't work, and that's on Sundays. That's a family day. I just keep the office closed. The studio is shut down. I make a prototype of all of my fun folds before I actually start designing. Because if there's a time to work out the kinks of something I did wrong, it's better to do it on scrap paper than of course on real paper. And keep in mind, this is my full-time business. And despite the fact this is my business, I love it. So it's never like work for me. So I do enjoy what I do. I also design anywhere from three to five weeks in advance, sometimes six. So I'm well ahead of what you're seeing right now. I did this weeks ago, which is why I practice. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, I can do two more. Uh, 
Okay, Susan has a question that I have personally asked myself over and over again. Susan says, how do I get the memento ink from not smearing when I use my alcohol markers? Tip number one, let it dry. We're not patient as paper crafters. We want to slap on that ink and we just want to go, okay? Keep in mind that your ink pads are probably a lot juicier than mine since I stamp almost every single day. So once you stamp it on the basic white cardstock, give it some time to process in the paper, okay? The quality of the paper is fantastic for the alcohol markers. Once it's dry, then use your alcohol markers and it will not smear. Yes, yay! And as I said before, make sure you give time between the light and the dark or the dark to the light, depending on how you like to use them before you add your next coat and begin blending. You have to let that alcohol process so that you don't have the bleeding or the expanding of your color. All right, let's do one more. Uh, um, okay, so I'm, I'm looking, looking really hard. Okay, they're scrolling so fast. Sandra says, write pens versus blenders. Do you use write at all? I do. All right, hold on. We're going to go down here. Um, I am going to turn you down. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. I'm grabbing a piece of cardstock. All right, now I'm going to tell you, this is one of the stamps we just used during tonight's demonstration. I'm going to turn it face up. I never, ever, ever, ever recommend putting an alcohol marker on your rubber stamps or photopolymer. That's at least a thing. If you want to experiment, go for it. I've had people tell me, oh, I do it and I do do this and this to clean it and it didn't work out for me. Okay. So obviously I use these for coloring in outline images, just like we did here, right? But let me tell you what I use my dye base markers for. So let me grab a dye base marker here. This is Pacific Point. Not only can you color with these if you're coloring in, I'll tell you, it's not my favorite way to color in an image, and here is why. It's not buildable like an alcohol-based marker. I can lay down an alcohol-based marker, and I can go back over it and over it and over it, and you will never see the lines. With a dye-based marker, oop, wrong line, you're going to be able to see where you left off. That will never, ever happen with an alcohol-based marker. So I use my dye-based markers if I do not have an alcohol marker that matches, because there's not one in every single color, but most. But I love them for this. Are you ready? Direct to the stamp. Let's say I want the word wishes in a different color. So I can do this in one color. I can use other colors on the stamp. Huff on it. <sighs> I call that the Darth Vader. And then you can get color or just pick up one word. So if I wanted just wishes on my card, I can do that with a dye-based marker. These are also great to use in really tiny, tiny little areas where alcohol-based inks or these markers tend to spread, which makes it a little bit more difficult to color in those little tiny areas. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, that's it for tonight. Thank you for sticking around and asking those. I'd love to share with you. I am looking forward to having you all join me on Monday, January 23rd. Have a great evening.